Just a quick video to go through uh, the Freelander 1 uh, brake light switch. This is the, the, the later type that Land Rover used. There's a little bit of confusion about how these work and there's a few things I'd like to know myself really. Uh, first inspection, they don't appear to do anything. The plunger, which this would be the brake pedal, just seems to move freely backwards and forwards. And in addition, there's, there's actually four terminals on the back, which seems a bit excessive for something as simple as a brake light switch. It's only when you realise that when these are uh, actually put into the bracket and turned that the lugs that are either side, which you can see here, as this comes in, my thumb being the brake pedal now, these lugs get rotated and actually set the distance from here to here since so it's unique to each, each vehicle. You can push that back and it pops back out again or if it was pushed right up there on one particular vehicle and that's turned, it sets the position so it works just there. It's actually quite clever. Um, so that sorts out why we have this arrangement of the lugs and, and that doesn't seem to do anything. But I'd like to know why it's got so many terminals on the back. Now I've already pre-loosened the clip, just so I'm not faffing around trying to get this off. So pull it apart and let's have a look inside. This is the first time I've seen inside myself. Okay, so in there we've got the, ah, that's for the lugs. And what we've got is a ratchet system. That's the bit that can turn, and that engages these teeth. Now, will that come away? So that comes away quite neatly. Ah, okay. And then underneath, We've got all the terminals. Now on this, I mean, I've just had to replace this one after a year's use because I've started getting the Three Amigos uh, warning lights back up again. And by changing it, it has stopped it straight away. Uh, I managed to actually clean this the other day by spraying it with switch clean, cleaner. And it got it working again. I'm looking inside. I'm seeing absolutely no evidence of any wear. Except, there we go. There we go, that's what's caused the issue down there. Don't know whether you can see on camera or not, but down there it's got dirty. And by spraying it with switch cleaner the other day, I suspect it's cleaned all that up. But yes, you can see on there that there's muck. So that's all that's happened. It's got dirty. Uh, they probably used too much grease when it was new. And because that contact's got a little bit dirty on there, it's caused the, the warning lights to come on. It basically stopped the brake lights working, which isn't great. So I guess the simple answer is for less than 10 quid, just change one of these. It's a, it's a two minute job. Change one of these every time that happens or take it apart and keep cleaning it. But that's why, um, that's why it works the way it does. That's why it's got four terminals on the back. As I say, there's a, that one there, that's got an insulated bit on it. I think there's just two feeds. There seems to be two feeds coming off. I'm guessing one's for the ABS sensors and perhaps the Hilda sense. Uh, one's for the brake light and one's probably the live feed. So if the live feed comes in, this might just send a signal out to, uh, yeah, those three things, ABS, Hill Descent, uh, and the brake lights. So really it's like a three-in-one switch, which is why it's so complicated. But yeah, they can be taken apart quite easily. And, and to be fair, I'll give this a good clean up and this might well be going on next time I have a problem. So um, thanks for watching. Hope that helped in some way.